Now, when you look at the characteristics of, uh, you know, cultures, you're looking at traditions, you're looking at uh, customs, you're looking at norms, you're looking at values, you look at principles, you look at the purpose, you're looking at boundaries, yes, they're part of culture, you're looking at things like symbols, you're looking at language, uh, you know, you're looking at artifacts, you're looking at so many things. Now, the reality of the matter is that, yes, we do have an an arts and culture, you know, thing going for us here in Uganda. It's embedded in our 56 tribes. Each tribe has a language. Each tribe has a dance, a traditional dance. Uh, each tribe has a traditional folk song. And uh, each tribe has uh, music, you know, and how they celebrate and recognize different things for themselves, especially when it comes to growth and development. Now, for example, you do have the, um, the Imbalu uh, that is uh, practiced in the eastern side of Uganda just to show that these men have, these boys have have become men, you know. <laughs> so that practice is to help these young boys transition into men. Here in the Buganda Kingdom, we also do have cultures to help young girls transition into women with the conversations, right and sickle, you know, those conversations that they have with the traditional singers. So there's so many different things that we do. But on a national level, we have marked 61 years of self-rule as a culture for us here in Uganda. And once again, happy independence to you, dear Uganda. I am joined by the one and only Andrew Kagwa, who is breathing and living arts and culture in his bloodstream, joining us for yet another discussion on arts and culture. Good morning to you, Andrew. Good morning. Happy independence. Yo, happy independence. <laughs> uh, what, what are you doing on Monday? Oh, of course I was working, dude. <laughs> no, no, I mean after working. We, we were here working then. After work, I actually just went out and uh, had a couple, an evening with my friends and my cousins. It was mm. pretty much a, a simple way. Why? Because all the celebrations were taken to Kitgum. So yep. the vibe in Kampala was very low. Like it was a very normal day in Kampala. Yeah. I know, I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. So tell us about your traditional wear. Mine is quite obvious. Yours, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to trace which of the 56 tribes <laughs> <laughs> this is. <laughs> uh, I can say if there is one thing people say about Buganda is the fact that Buganda welcomes a lot, welcomes other people, mm. and they welcome them to the fold so that they become family members. So today I think, today I just decided to tour uh, one of those people we keep embracing. Uh, one, I believe, I believe culture is the way of life. So I do not want to tie it to one yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, so part of this is uh, Kente. Kente is from Ghana. It comes in different shades. It's just that this is white and black. Mm -hmm. uh, this was actually made by a friend. It's, it's an artifact that was made by a friend. Uh, it's a pile of buttons. So I would say I'm wearing someone's art piece. Okay. The person is called Teddy Navisenke. Okay. She's a jeweler. She makes different jewel. Uh, this is inspired by the Igbo from Nigeria, and these are beads. Beads are a big part of African culture because we used to use them for different things. For uh, At times women used to wear them at the different stages of their lives, mm -hmm. but then at times men would wear them to show their different levels in culture like say a war general wore different beads from other soldiers a chief wore different beads from other soldiers and beads were originally first made in africa mm -hmm. yeah. uh, there's someone who's also wondering these artifacts on your hand <laughs> the artifacts of course it, it it's, it's also the same thing about um africa african loving on ornaments oh, yeah. or yeah, yeah. like we've we've wore Oh, we've wore bangles for a very long time. I, I think it's so hard to be in Karamoja and you do not find a person wearing a mm -hmm. bangle. Uh, it's the same thing when you're with the Maasai. You will always find someone wearing a bangle. So much as most of these are not from Karamoja, but most of these are from Africa. Uh, I think only three are from Karamoja. One is from Kenya. 
and then others are from Uganda's corporate world. But yeah. Well, that is how beautiful culture is, uh, that different symbols and different artifacts actually are translated into something for us. So when you see him, uh, he has forgotten to mention the dreadlocks. The dreadlocks ah. is also a culture. Yeah. Please talk to us about that culture. Uh, this is from, from us. Like what, when people always mistaken the locks and the, they think they are from Jamaica. But they're from us, they're from, from the land. Uh, the dreadlocks have been with us for a very long time. Mm -hmm. Like most of the powerful men used to spot dreadlocks. Mo just that most of those were free forms. Free forms is, are those locks that just grow. Uh, most of us make ours, mm. like we make ours the way we want them to look like. But uh, locks were usually spotted by the strongest men. Uh, in Buganda, it's believed that Kabaka Manga was the first person to wear locks in Buganda. So, yeah, mm -hmm. locks have been with us for a very long time. They are very cultural, very spiritual. Uh, sometimes they, there's that whole thing where we say, do not touch my locks unless you know what each and every lock represents. Yeah. Like, they represent our independence, uh, the different people that have died for it. Yeah the Africans that we love so much. Mm -hmm. Some represent Kenya, Uganda, Malaba. Beautiful locks. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that makes me jealous. So, my locks. <laughs> my, for you, you have locks, I have strings. <laughs> this brings us into the question, what's the pride of your culture? What's the pride of your culture? Now you can share that on our social media platforms, hashtag morning at NTV, and we'll be able to check them out, your responses later on. What's the pride of your culture? We want to know what's your culture and what's the pride of your culture. Share with that on our social media platforms, the X app and Facebook, as well as YouTube, NTV Uganda, hashtag morning at NTV, and later on we'll be able to digest on that. Now the arts and culture, focusing on 61 years mm -hmm. later of your Uganda gaining self-rule. It's been actually a very productive uh, arts and culture uh, with economic contribution mm -hmm. and uh, as far as employment is concerned, mm -hmm. as far as um, funding the national budget is concerned. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about the economic contribution and uh, of the arts and culture. The economic, the economic uh, contribution is there but you see when you talk about it like economic contribution you make it sound like they even know that arts and culture contributes. Mm -hmm. Most of the times when I'm seeing uh, government people or the people in those high offices talking about art and, art and culture, they do not really seem to know that there is a contribution. But one, the easiest is uh, creating employment, uh, looking at the fact that this is one of the most undervalued, under-facilitated, and uh, very unstructured, some of which is directly to do with them mm -hmm. and some of which is directly to do with the industry. It has contributed so much when it comes to creating employment. Remember this is the only sector where you don't really need an interview to join. Like most of the times what you need is your talent. Mm -hmm. Like can you write? Can you put together something and present it? most of the times that's how you start like literally i know very many authors that have started by contributing a short story to someone else's bigger book and then in a very long time they get to publish their very first anthology uh it's the same thing with music like someone will go to a village studio produce a very bad song some will get a chance to perform it and before you know they are in Kampala performing that song mm -hmm. and then will somehow get access to a better studio and before you know they are being paid but of course when you're talking about uh, economic contribution you're looking at how they are directly giving back to the ind to to the country yeah, yeah. one at the moment the industry pays tax like I, I feel so good the industry pays tax. So that's true because collectively, yeah. when you look at the financial year 2018 2019, there was mm -hmm. a collective contribution of arts, culture, and mm -hmm. tourism yeah. up to the tune of 1.6 uh, billion Ugandan shillings. And trust me, that's very little. I mean, you, that was USD actually. That's yeah. 
that's very little compared to what the industry can actually give if if we were properly say governed and structured yeah. we could contribute so much more uh, because l let's just look at a single night when when an artist has a concert mm -hmm. like you if you can just look at the chain value of people that benefit because one artist had decided to have a concert one someone will do the banners uh, someone will voice the advert, mm -hmm. uh, someone, food vendors. there will be food vendors, mm -hmm. someone will come to sell drinks. Most of the times the people that sell food and the people that are selling drinks run out of these things and they have to restock. So money is being made and money is being put in the system. Money because is being spent, money is being made. Yes, yeah. because someone decided to have a concert. And uh, then besides that, you look at the people that are on stage, even before you think about the artists themselves. Uh, there will be a stage manager, there will be an MC, someone is handling the lights, someone is handling the sound. These are usually teams, and all people on those teams are getting paid. And then you come <coughs> to the artist, most of the people are seeing an artist, but the artist has a band, yeah. which band usually has about six people, and then about three backup vocalists. And there is that social media guy who is moving with the artist, recording videos and everything. Mm. Technically, all those people are getting paid. So we're looking to thousands of people being employed by this particular industry. Uh, yeah. But then it comes with the challenges I know, especially in this 21st century, it has come with a lot of uh, challenges. One of the challenges is the limited investment, especially from mm -hmm. the side of government. Mm -hmm. uh, one, we do not need government support in form of investment. We do not need their support in form of money. We need their support in form of um, policy and infrastructure, because there are some infrastructure they only can put up. Uh, I've been to countries, you know, the funny thing is you find presidents talking down on this industry, talking down on art, not knowing that most countries are usually judged <coughs> by the state of this industry. Yeah. With my years of travel, one thing I've learned is that every time you find a country with a thriving art industry, there are chances it's a developed country. Because by the time someone starts putting money into developing the state of the art theater mm -hmm. or uh, the state-of-the-art opera, chances are they've already taken care of the hospitals. So every time you're like, ah, that's not a priority, we shouldn't be putting money on that. The reason you're not putting money on it is because there are more things that are lacking. Because of the underdevelopment. Yeah. Okay. That's so, that's so, a hard fact so, 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 yeah, when it comes to, we just need yeah. government to put together infrastructure. Okay. Like, for example, look at the National Theatre. When was the last time it was well, actually renovated? Well, since I was born, I have seen it with the same paint, uh, in the same way. Like, not e even the grass is the same. It should be different to grass, at least. Mm. And, <laughs> the, most really and, and the most annoying thing... I was born. Now, I, I imagine since inception. The most annoying thing is that the National Theatre in Uganda exists as a place. In other places, it exists as an institution. Okay. Like you find a national theater in Moroto, you find a national theater in Gulu, you find one in Masaka. In Uganda, it's existing as a place. Okay. All right. Um, let, let's talk about um, the preservation of culture for us here in Uganda uh, with the evolution of the film industry. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a great opportunity for arts to preserve our arts and culture. The other day, you and I here on this mm -hmm. set had that debate of you were looking for some material and you couldn't find, you had limited sources mm -hmm. and yet you expected that at least every media house that is well established mm -hmm. should be having an archive of this information. Yeah. But archiving our arts and culture has seemingly uh, been difficult for us to appreciate and to even do so as a country. So how, what's the importance of the preservation of our arts and culture? One, like even if it's not arts and culture, even if it's preserving sports, 
preservation is very important. And uh, I, I usually hate a question on preservation because it's very political. Okay. Uh, you see, reasons for not preserving usually go back to our primitive ways, mm -hmm. like, like who are the people leading us mm -hmm. and how much do they value history? Because, man, valuing history comes from one having a certain intellect, uh, being exposed in a way, and you know, being exposed is not all about being rich. Like you could still be rich and you value building an arcade which you do not have an idea that in three years it's still going to be empty. And probably you're cutting down a theater to build an arcade. Mm. So like why I said it's very political because most of the reasons we are not preserving is because we are always trying to build new by taking down the old. Like at times we think we are just taking away structures, but we are taking away everything yeah, they represent. Away history. And many of the things that are in those places at the time we're destroying them. Mm -hmm. It's been very, very hard to recollect this country's history, whether it's sports, whether it's uh, politics, whether it's culture, it's been so hard. And mainly of those is because we, we are being run by people that do not value mm -hmm. preserving anything okay. that much. All right, so it really calls for a preservation of not just arts and culture, but everything. Um, everything. Uh, we have, you've talked about the historical sites. I was dismayed by the, you know, the dismantling of the first Ugandan Kampala Mall that we had. Mm -hmm. and now this stands a different structure. Or An ugly one. Of, you know, someone is richer, they can afford to. But uh, that being taken away, the Norman Cinema, you know, all these things mm -hmm. that are actually there to show us where we have come from as a country in terms of arts and culture now uh, uh, we, 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 we actually tried we can only advocate for we actually tried to <laughs> to advocate for a preservation of one of uh, the structures and uh, this time I think the attacks against the preservation were coming from church oh yeah because it's a structure where it's a structure that sits in a place that's a church hmm. yeah uh, where Watoto is, mm -hmm. it was one of the finest cinemas mm -hmm. in Kampala mm -hmm. those years. And uh, it was a go-to place. It's that place everyone wanted to go to. Because uh, one, if you, if you see their entrance, mm -hmm. so their entrance used to have lights and then it had those stairs. Oh, really? So it had that, that that whole glamour thing, yeah. how people would come and they're walking down. So it was, it was the eat place okay. those days. All right, uh, you've talked <laughs> about advocacy. Uh, there's um, notable figures, uh, you mm -hmm. know, in the arts industry, such as Horebo Rachel Magoda, who has mm -hmm. actually established a dedic. She, she suggests that an unestablished, dedicated ministry, maybe mm -hmm. to arts and culture, uh, can drive the efforts of uh, the preservation conversation mm -hmm. we're talking about, uh, the protection of the industry, but also the enhancement of that industry. What's your view on that? Uh, and an <laughs> a, a, culture, a culture ministry will only give people jobs. Okay. Like, <laughs> a culture ministry will only give people jobs. Uh -huh. uh, one, what's a ministry in this country? Mm. Like at times you have a ministry, but at the end of the day, it's the president that comes and opens things, that comes and launches things. Like you have ministers that cannot really decide. And then of course, you also have that problem that at times we have people that do not have an idea of what they're talking about. So at the end of the day, you will have a ministry, but then you'll have the president appoint okay. the minister. And you'll end up with someone that totally has no idea of what art and culture needs. Like, I mean, there was a time someone was made an ED at the National Theater mm -hmm. and totally had no idea of how art is run. Like, technically, that's why the place is almost a hell house at the moment. Okay. 
like it's under leadership that doesn't seem to understand how to run a place and how to make money from art. And, and so, um, <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, we speak of so many negatives, but we must forge a way forward. Um, as we wrap up this conversation, what would be your advisory to a way forward with your experience and exposure? A way forward is always with us. One, in Uganda, one thing I've noticed that we usually thrive with, with talent. Mm -hmm. We thrive with things that do not need anyone's support. Mm -hmm. That's how we've done it with athletics. Okay. People usually thrive on their own. One, as artists, we need to know, much as we're doing it, for our communities, mm. we are also doing it for ourselves. We are doing it for our legacies, mm -hmm. and how we want people to remember us. Mm. One start by understanding where you're from; it can guide you into the future. The moment you do not understand your history, which I've seen is a very common thing with many of one our artists, our writers, our creatives. They do not really understand their background, yeah. and because of that, they are creating at times from a place of ignorance okay we need to understand where we're from right to appreciate the future we want to create now let me show you the power of what he's talking about uh, the best example that we do have right now is bobby wine alias uh, um robert chagurani sentamo the documentation of his journey into mm -hmm. politics has earned him international recognition it became a film recognized in an international festival mm -hmm. and awarded uh, for that but simply because there was just documentation and keeping of uh, records and films and videos and pictures of every single moment uh, that then were collectively put together to put out a message you know so that's how important it is so these things you, that you're taking photos and you just you know deleting them tomorrow no 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 someday you'll need those photos especially in this day and era yeah. where technology is uh, the root of every single thing that we do we do have the uganda national cultural center that has also been it was you know designed to actually help the arts and culture uh, it's a potential body that if well funded uh, can do a lot of things for arts and culture here in uganda now